Hey everyone, today is Thursday, March 2nd, 2023. I shall be reading to you all the book of Ruth, chapter 2, verses 1. Oh, oops. Oh, geez. 1 through 23. Gospel of John. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 25. The first letter of St. John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 29. Revelation of St. John, sorry, chapter 2. Verses 1 through 29. And we shall begin with the Book of Ruth. Please subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos and playlists. I have galore. And just a fun fact. I pre-record about half of my videos so I record them on a certain date or dates and then I post them in the future just a fun fact for example I'll give you an example um the Saint Therese and the Catechism and the um Daily Young Companion for Young Catholics um I was pre-recording those videos and for in the future i started recording those videos back in 2022 actually so it would be all prepared for 2024 that's just a small example anyway book of ruth chapter two the meeting naomi had a prominent kinsman named boaz the clan of her husband Alamechek. Ruth the Moabite, Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go and glean ears of grain in the field of anyone who will allow me that favor. Naomi said to her, Go, my daughter, and she went. The field she entered to glean after the harvesters happened to be the section belonging to Boaz of the clan of uh, clan of Elimelech, like Boaz himself came from Bethlehem and said to the harvesters, "The Lord be with you," and they replied, "The Lord bless you." Boaz asked the overseer of his harvesters, "Whose girl is this?" The overseer of the harvesters answered. She she is the Moabite girl who returned from the plateau of Moab with Naomi. She asked leave to gather the gleanings in, into sheaves after the harvesters, and ever since she came this morning, she has remained here until now, with scarcely a moment's rest. Boaz said to Ruth, Listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in anyone else's field. You are not to leave here. Stay here with my women and servants. Watch to see which field is to be harvested and follow them. I have commanded the young men to do you no harm. When you are thirsty, you may go and drink from the vessels the young men have filled. Casting herself prostrate upon the ground, she said to him, Why should I, a foreigner, be favored with your notice? Boaz answered her, I have had a complete account of what you have done for your mother-in-law after her husband's death. You have left her father and her mother and the land of her birth and have come to a people whom you did not know previously. May the Lord re reward what you have done. May you receive a full reward from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. She said, May I prove worthy of your kindness, my lord. You have comforted me, your servant, with your consoling words. Would indeed that I were a servant of yours. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, Come here and have some food. 
dip your bread in the sauce. Then, as she sat near the reapers, he handed her some roasted grain, and she ate her fill and had some left over. She rose to glean, and Boaz instructed the servants to let her glean among the sheaves themselves without scolding her, and even to let drop some handfuls and leave them for her to glean without being rebuked. She gleaned in the field until evening, and when she beat out what she had gleaned, it came to about an Epha of barley, which she took into the city and showed her showed her mother in law. Next she brought out and gave what she had left over from lunch. So her mother in law said to her, Where did he glean today? Where did he go to work? May he who took notice of you be blessed. Then she told her mother in law with whom she had worked. The man at whose place I work today is named Boaz, she said. May he be blessed by the Lord, who is ever merciful to the living and the dead. Naomi exclaimed, ex exclaimed to her daughter-in-law, and she continued, He is a relative of ours, one of our next of kin. He even told me, added Ruth, the, Mo the, the Moabite, that I should stay with the servants until they complete his entire harvest. You would do well, my dear. Naomi rejoined, to go out with his servants, for in someone else's field he might be insulted. So she stayed cleaning with the servants of Boaz until the end of the barley and wheat harvest. That was the Book of Ruth, chapter 2, verses 1 through 23. Uh, yeah, 2023. Ruffles, it's okay. Today has been long with my dog. <laughs> it's funny. So off to the Gospel of John, Chapter Two. The wedding at Cana, one of my favorites. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the, ser to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now, there are six stone water jars there for Jewish, Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when he... Oh. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then when people have drunk their fill fr freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as a beginning of his signs in Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. After this, he and his mother, his brothers, and his disciples went down to Capernaum and stayed there only a few days. Cleansing of the Temple Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them out, all out of the temple area with the sheep and, ox sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace his disciples recalled the words of uh, words of scripture zeal for your house will consume me 
At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for forty six years, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. That was the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 25. I remember when I was 25 years old. When I turned 26, I entered the second quarter. I can't remember. Yeah, the second quarter of my life. I had lived a quarter of a century. So, yeah. Okay. The first letter of St. John, chapter 2. Christ and his commandments. My children, I'm writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the Righteous One. He is expiration for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. This is the way we may know that we are in union with him. Whoever claims to abide in him ought to live just as he lived. The new commandment. Beloved, I am writing to and I am writing no new commandment to you, but an old commandment that you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. And yet, I do write a new commandment to you, which holds true in him and among you. For the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light, yet hates his brother, is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother remains in the light, and there is nothing in him to cause a fall. Whoever hates his brother is in the darkness. He walks in darkness and does not know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Members of the community, I am writing to you, children, because your sins have been forgiven for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have conquered the evil one. I write to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are the strong, and the word of God remains in you, and you have conquered the evil one. Do not leave the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, sensual lust, enticement for the eyes, and a pretentious life, is not from the Father. It's not from the Father, but is from the world. Yet the world and its enticement are passing away. But whoever does the will of God remains forever. Antichrist. Children, it is the life last hour, and just as you heard that the Antichrist was coming, so now many Antichrists have appeared. Thus we know this is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not really of our number. If they had been, they would have remained in us. Their desert, their desertion shows that none of them was of our number. 
but you have had you but you have the anointing that comes from the holy one and you all have knowledge i write to you not because you do not know the truth but because you do and because every lie is alien to the truth who is the liar whoever denies that christ that jesus is the christ whoever denies the father and the son this is the antichrist no one who denies the son has the father but whoever confesses the son has the father as well life from god's anointing let what you heard from the beginning remain in you if what you heard from the beginning remains in you then you will remain in the son and in the father and this is the promise that he made us eternal life i write you these things about those who would deceive you as for you the anointing that you received from him remains in you so that you do not need anyone to teach you but this anointing teaches you about everything and is true and not false just as it taught you remain in him children of god and now children remain in him so that when he appears we may have confidence and not be put to shame by him at his coming if you consider that he is righteous you also know that everyone who acts in righteousness is begotten by him and that was the second letter uh, i mean first letter of saint john chapter 2 verses 1 through 29 i am 29 years old and i'm turning 30 later this month On to Revelation of St. John, Chapter 2. Yeah. Literally, the page that has Chapter 2 on it is torn. I'll show you all, okay? Ooh, oops. Ah. Yeah, you can see it's torn. Chapter 2. Two Ephesus. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write this. The one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks in the midst of the seven gold lampstands says this. I know your works, your labor, and your endurance, and that you cannot tolerate the wicked. You have tested those who call themselves apostles but are not, and discovered that they are impostors. Moreover, you have endurance and have suffered for my name, and you have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have lost the love you had at first. Realize how far you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. Otherwise, I will come to you and remove your life sand from its place, unless you repent. But you have this in your favor. You hate the works of the... Of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the vicar I will give the right to eat from the tree of life that is in the garden of God. To Smyrna. To the angel of the church in Smyrna. Write this. The first and the last. Who once died came but came to life says this i know your tribulation and poverty but you are rich i know the slander of those who claim to be jews and are not but rather are members of the assembly of satan do not be afraid of anything that you are going to suffer indeed the devil will throw some of you into prison that you may be tested, and you will face an, an ordeal for ten days. Remain faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The vicar shall not be harmed by the second death. To Pergamum, to the angel of the church in Pergamum, write this. The one with a two sharp two with a sharp two-edged sword says this 
I know that you live where Satan's throne is, and yet you hold fast to my name and have not denied your faith in me, not even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was martyred among you, where Satan lives. Yet I have, I have a few things against you. You have some people there who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who instructed Balak to put a stumbling block before the before the Israelites, to eat food, sacrifice the idols, and to play the harlot. Likewise, you also have some people who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Therefore, repent. Otherwise, I will come to you quickly and wage war against them with the sword of my mouth. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the church. Churches. To the vicar, I shall give some of the hidden manna. I shall also give a white amulet upon which is inscribed a new name, which no one knows except the one who receives it. To Thyatria, to the angel of the church in Thyatria, write this. The son of God, whose eyes are like a fiery, fiery, fiery flame and whose feet are like polished brass, says this. I know your works, your love, faith, servants, and endurance, and that your last works are greater than the first. Yet I hold this against you, that you tolerate the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a, a prophetess, who teaches and misleads my servants to play the harlot and to eat food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her, of her harlotry. So I will cast her on a sick bed and plunge those who commit adultery with her into intense suffering unless they repent of her works. I will also put her children to death. Thus shall all the churches come to know that I am the searcher of hearts and minds and that I will give each of you what your works deserve. But I say to you, I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, who do not uphold this teaching and know nothing of the so-called deep secrets of Satan. On you I will place no further burden, except that you must hold fast to what you have until I come. To the victor, who keeps to my ways until the end, I will give authority over the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod. Like clay vessels will they be smashed. Just as I received authority from my father, and to him I will give the morning star. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And that was the Revelation of St. John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 29. Again, I'm 29 still. And I'm turning 30 on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. I'm also part Irish and Scottish. Originally, St. Patrick was born somewhere in Scotland, got kidnapped by Irish pirates, I think Irish pirates, lived in Ireland as a slave, finally escaped and went back to Scotland. Then um, God appeared to him in a vision. I think the angel of Ireland um, appeared to him, asked uh, Patrick to go back to Ireland, and he eventually did. It became bishop and started um, an order. I can't remember what they're called. So Patrick was actually Scottish and not Irish. And he talked about the Holy Trinity with a shamrock. So that being said, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. And I hope you had a lovely Thursday. I'm sorry for posting this late. Anyway, God bless, Udo.